It's been a tough time in the industry. Our teams certainly haven't been getting bigger. Maybe they've been shrinking. And the list of urgent business needs and projects has been getting longer and longer. So it's not a surprise that prioritizing tech debt has been tough. I have a small team, about six engineers, and our last quarterly retro made it very clear that, and I quote, our tech debt was raging out of control. Clearly, we take our retros very seriously. In the next 10 minutes, I will cover some concrete steps that we took to go from this to this in the course of three months. My name is Sahana. I am an engineering manager at Zip. We build B2B procurement software. And I've been working in this industry for about 10 years. I've had stints as a founder, a founding engineer, but most of my career, I've been a full stack product engineer. I live in Oakland with my husband and my adorable dog, Luna. So what do you do about a team that's starting to feel the toll of a neglected code base? In this talk, we'll first cover how you're gonna empower your team to decide what it is that they're gonna work on. And then we'll talk about how you're gonna get that work on the roadmap. I have a blog post that I wrote that has all of these details. You can see the link at the bottom right of every slide. So feel free to find all of this information there after. Before we jump in, I wanna introduce an important concept that many of our speakers have already talked about, impact. It's probably a category on your engineering leveling guidelines, and I'm sure you've talked about it during performance reviews. What is impact and why is it important? Impact is the effect that your team's decisions and work has on the organization's performance, goals, and stakeholders. It's the thing that your team can influence that has a direct correlation with the business's bottom line. And more than anything, it's a common language that all of the stakeholders working at the company can agree upon. Working on tech debt has business impact. So why not describe it as such? To illustrate, let's step into your PM's shoes. And if you don't work with a PM, maybe it's the head of product, maybe it's the founder. What do they care about? We're gonna talk through two statements and I want you to tell me from the lens of this product manager, which do you think is more compelling? Statement one, the code for our product has so much tech debt, it makes working in this code base feel disgusting and everything takes longer than it should. Building new products on this stack is incredibly difficult and we'd like to invest in re-architecting it to make it better. Statement number two, we have a vision for the future of this product and we wanna invest in a feature our customers have been begging for. We have a plan to incrementally make improvements to the code base as we work on this project. Investing in this will unblock future work in this area. So which of these do you think your PM will find more compelling and why is that? If you pick the second one, it's because we're simply reframing the tech debt ask to be impact focused. So keep that in your back pocket. We're gonna be revisiting this concept of impact a couple times. So first things first, I want you to start thinking about how you're gonna incept your team's needs to all of the stakeholders at your company. As soon as you've been made aware of these needs, it's time to get to work. There should be no surprises at the next time you do roadmap planning. There are a couple ways to do this. One of my favorite ways is to use data a qualitative developer survey like the one I showed you before to bug and incident trends can all be really powerful to help you illustrate the urgency and the hot spots. Number two, start early. Start thinking one to two quarters ahead so that everyone involved knows exactly what your team needs and what you plan on investing in. And sometimes you're gonna need to make some demands. In our case, when we had our Q2, we had some quality work planned, but as things go, something landed on our plate that was really high priority. So we had to make the hard decision of deprioritizing our technical debt. At that time, I made it really clear that to make up for that deprioritization, the following quarter, we needed 30% of our time to focus on that quality work. 
I was making demands, hoping that they would get listened to, and it turned out okay, I guess. We got 30% of our bandwidth for Q3 to focus on quality work, and my team was obviously very happy about this. The next step is to prepare your team. Your team is gonna be helping drive the solutioning around how you're gonna address your tech debt. Start by setting expectations on resourcing and cross-team expectations. There also might be some cross-team dependencies that your team needs to be made aware of. The second thing is the biggest game changer. Teach them to talk about impact first. Reframe the tech debt that they have in their minds from an impact first lens. And here's how we did this. We made an exhaustive list of the quality projects that we wanted to work on. Anyone on my team could add to this list. They had to fill in, with the help of others, engineering cost estimates, very rough, high-level guidelines around what they felt the impact was, the impact area, and their overall level of confidence around these guesstimates, if you will. We used rough t-shirt sizing and did this exercise in a room together so that everyone could give each other the context that they needed around the product, but also around the technical complexities involved. From this, we sorted by impact, and we took this into Fig Jam, and we did a fun boating session where we decided how were we gonna fill the four weeks that we had available as a team. There were some clear winners, and it became very clear to everyone in the room why those were the winners, because we had talked about impact. Next, it's your job to go and get this work on the roadmap. So you're gonna need to start by crafting your message. Stakeholders rely on you to tell them what's important for the engineering team, yes, but more importantly, they want you to understand what's important for the business that your team can affect. And that's what you're trying to get across. The key decision makers understand impact first language. And so you want them comparing apples and apples. If you're able to illustrate the impact of the technical debt, then that work actually has a fighting chance to get on the roadmap. And of course, you're gonna get pushed back. Why now? Is this urgent? What about this other customer ask that feels very important, feels more important than the work that you're proposing? And you're gonna have the answers to those questions. And you're also going to be able to communicate the risk to the business if you don't prioritize this tech debt at this time. Sadly, if it still doesn't get prioritized, then honestly, it's probably what's best for the business. You are a business stakeholder and that's important to you. Of course, we weren't able to get to everything on our long list of projects. Um, and an engineer on my team had a great idea. As a way to tackle one to two day tasks, she created a concept called quality fruits. These are one to two day efforts that are lower in priority and not as time sensitive, but allow us to incrementally keep making improvements to our code base. And so we visit this backlog every week and we pick up one to two tasks based on bandwidth for our team. And at the end of the month, whichever engineer has fixed the most quality fruits gets, yes, a fruit themed award. So to recap, empower your team to decide what to work on. And this starts with helping them talk about impact, setting expectations on resourcing and the needs of the business, and allowing your team to decide what it is that they wanna work on. Finally, building a culture of continuous improvement. Then your job is to get that work on the roadmap. Start incepting these ideas and these needs early, craft an impact first message, and use data and team sentiment to track and upsell how you're doing. With the dedicated quality month, our team was able to make significant progress on quite a few things. We improved some endpoint performance. We made significant progress to migrate and modernize our stack. We improved our pyrite type coverage and we tackled 32 quality fruits. Lastly, if you make these changes, your team is gonna notice. A happy team that feels supported does good work. Thank you for listening.